Welcome to another on shape tutorial. In today's video, I want to go through the process of trying to create the bird feeder that you currently see here. As it is with anything that you want to 3D model, the first thing we need to do is get some kind of strategy together. As I interpret this part, I can see that I have a main cylinder, this body that everything else is being created onto. That's probably where I'm going to start. I can also see that that cylinder is hollow or emptied out with a missing top. I then have a couple of holes that seem to go all the way through. It looks like from this face I have two holes and this one I have one. I also have these cylindrical features, I'm guessing they're the perches, and they come out and it looks like they're symmetrical. They come out the same distance both the front and the back. Alright, so where are we going to start? I'm going to start with just a basic cylinder. And I know I've got several different ways that I can try to create that cylinder. I could draw a circle and extrude it up. I could draw a rectangle and I could revolve it. Um, and that's just two to get started with. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to a new document and see if I can at least create a cylinder. I'm not going to worry about any dimensions right now. I'm going to take care of those later. Uh, but for right now, I just want to try to get a cylinder and then see if I can't empty it out. Okay, so for my strategy, I'm going to draw a center point circle on the top plane and extrude it up. So a new sketch a center point circle. I am going to lock it onto the origin. That's going to be extremely important for the strategy I'm going to use. And right now I'm not going to worry about a dimension. Okay, so let's go ahead and extrude that. And there we go. Proportionately, that's about what I would like it to look like. And again, I'm going to go back and put dimensions on later. All right, so I've done it. I have a cylinder, and now I need to try to hollow that out. We have a special tool that does that. The tool's name is Shell. I'm going to come to Shell, and I've got options for hollow, remove faces. There's a whole bunch of different ways that this tool can get used. For this one, I'm just going to do a face to remove, and I'm just going to click on this top face. That has opened up the entire thing. The hollow we'll use on another activity. So faces to remove, I just want this face of extrusion one. Um, I can click on multiple faces, but for right now, that's the only one that I want to open up. So just exactly what is shell? Um, well, it's an empty M&M. &M. Uh, it's just the candy coating on the outside, and the chocolate's gone. I've also had the opportunity for the way I'm using this one to open or remove a face. But the thickness is constant all the way around it, and that's the shell thickness. Uh, right now, by default, it's 0.1. I don't know what it's going to end up being in the end, so for right now, I'm just going to leave that alone. So right now I have a 0.1 thickness on the walls of the cylinder and a 0.1 thick floor that's in the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Um, I'm going to see if I can't go ahead and put these large holes in there. So it looks like I have two large holes coming from the right hand side and one on the left. But what you'll notice is you can't put a sketch on something that's not flat. I do have these original work planes that I can use, and then later we're going to be creating our own. And there are several different ones that we're going to be utilizing. So for right now, for this activity anyways, I'm going to use these that already exist. This front and the right are going to be the two that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on the front and square it up. And I know that this is the side that only has one hole. I do want to make sure that I actually put it in the middle. So I'm going to not click on, but I'm going to link this together. So all I did was kind of take my mouse down to the origin so that that's tethered or linked together. And it's going to be somewhere-ish in the middle. And again, how big it is, I'll put all that on later. Okay, so that's good. Well, what are we going to do with that? Well, if I go to extrude right now, I actually can't pick that circle. Unfortunately, since it's inside the part, that's not something I can click on. But I can just come over here where it says Sketch 2, and I can pick it from there. What you will notice, though, if I had actually turned the part since it's shelled or opened up, if I'd gone to extrude, I could have picked it from there. But maybe some things don't have the shell. So if you've ever drawn something that's inside the part, just go ahead and pick the sketch from the side, and it'll pick everything that you want. I do want it to be a remove, and I do want it to be a through all. But unfortunately, that's just going out the back side. Onshape does gives you the option to then send it out another direction. So I'm going to go ahead and pick second in position and make that a through all. Great, so now I have one hole that goes all the way through on my front face. 
All right, let's see if we can't go ahead and put the other two in. So I'm going to do a new sketch on my right side face. I'll grab a circle. I'm linking it onto here just so I get that little dotted orange line. And then I'll do another one up here somewhere. I'll do an extrude. I'm just going to pick sketch three. I should grab them both as a remove through all. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a second in position and make that through all. Okay, great. So we have the main body. That was a cylinder. We've hollowed it out, and then we've gone ahead and poked the holes in there. Great. Now let's see if we can't get the perches on there. And it is really nice that these work planes are dead smack in the middle. That only had to do with my original sketch was locked onto the origin. Since my original sketch was locked into the origin, where the front and the right intersect just happens to be in the middle of my part, and that's going to give me a big advantage when I try to do the perches. And I'll show you why. When I go ahead and do a sketch on the front, and draw that small perch on there. Again, link it onto the center. When I go to extrude it, whatever distance I go out one way, I'm going to go the exact same distance out the other way because that work plane's in the middle. Um, and I don't know what that's going to be. So for right now, five is going to work for me. And the second one, and I'll do five. And because our feature is dead smack in the middle of the part, Rather than putting in two different depths, both being blind, I can also come up here and change blind to symmetric. And once I do that, then I can put in a dimension that's going to be the same both directions. So 5 inch right now is 5 inches from the center. So I'm going 2.5 out one direction and 2.5 out the other direction. So if I wanted it to be 10 total, then I could just type in 10, and then symmetrically it's going to go the same out one direction as it does the other, and that's pretty cool too. Sometimes I'll go ahead and do it as two different steps, and sometimes I'll go ahead and pick symmetric if I remember it's there. Okay, great, and then I'm just going to repeat that for the other two. Okay, great, so let's walk back through it. I'm going to roll back all the way to the beginning, we made a cylinder, we hollowed that cylinder out, we went ahead and put one of the holes in, and then the other one. Then I went ahead and put one of the perches on, and then the other two perches. The order of operations after the shell is really kind of up to you. So I have all the features that I need. They're just not the right sizes. So can I correct that? Yeah. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go back into my original sketch and I want to think about what is it that I need to know here. Well, I need to know the diameter of the cylinder. So I'm going to go back to the actual print, the working document that holds all the dimensions that I need. Okay, so in this print, I need to find some kind of dimension that tells me how big the actual diameter of the cylinder is. And I can see up here it says that it is a 4-inch diameter. Okay, great. So to simplify it, I'm actually going to grab my rollback and I'm going to go all the way back up to the beginning. Okay, so I now have a cylinder that it's the correct diameter, but it's not the correct extrusion. So for my extrusion right now, I have 8.44. That was just a random number that I kind of put in there. So I'm going to go back to the working drawing, and I see that it has an overall height of 10 inches. Okay, great. I could have started out with a 4-inch diameter cylinder with a 10-inch extrusion and then gone from there, but sometimes I don't know exactly what I want the dimensions to be. Unfortunately, right now, even though Onshape likes to go ahead and adapt everything within a single sketch, when I change this one thing to 4 inches, it didn't change everything else. So it only adapts things in individual sketches. So that can cause you some trouble if you don't try to start out with something about the right size to begin with. So I may encourage you to go ahead and at least start out with a 4 inch diameter cylinder that's 10 inches long so that the rest of your things are more proportional to that original feature. All right, but at any rate, let's go ahead and look at the next thing. So that shell, I just went ahead and left it as the default of 0.1. What's it supposed to be? Well, if I take a look at this section view, I have this identifier or this notification B. B is pointing to this detail view up here at the top that tells me I have 0.125 typical as a wall thickness all the way around everything. Okay, so 0.125 is going to be the shell thickness. 
okay, great. So you may want to actually start out with something more realistic or something more similar to the size that you want it so that as you start adapting the rest of it, you may have started out something really tiny and then everything else doesn't adapt very well. So I'd encourage you to start out with at least the 4-inch diameter circle, the 10-inch extrusion, and the 0.125 wall thickness. Everything else you draw from there is probably going to be decently proportioned, and then as you change things, it's probably not going to cause you as many issues. All right, so what's next? All right, it was that first hole. So as I take a look at that, I need to know two things. Not only do I need to know how big it is, I need to know where it is. Well, I did go ahead and lock it on side to side. It's this up and down that I don't know. So I need a diameter and an up and down location, usually to a center point. All right, so from the bottom up, it's five inches, but how big is it? So there's nothing actually pointing at this circle that identifies its diameter. Um, how about over here? Okay, so this one. It says it's a two-inch diameter, TYP, and it's pointing at one of the circles. That indicates that all of the circles are the same size. Okay, so we have a two-inch diameter, five inches up. And because I said extrude through all, no matter how big the cylinder got, it was always going to go, well, through all. So for that feature, that's all I needed to do was identify its size and its location and everything else adapted to it. All right, so we need to do the same thing for the next one. So I'm going to go in. I already know the diameters. They're all going to be 2. And if you want to use the equal sign, you could do that. But I need a location, usually from the bottom to the center point is what they're going to identify for me. So I can see I have a 2 inch up and an 8 and a half inch up. And the same thing because they were through all, they went ahead and adapted the way they were supposed to. Alright, so all we have left to do is these two perches. So the first thing we need to do is identify a diameter, a location, and then because this one is an actual extrusion instead of a cut, I'm going to have to figure out how much. So let's go back in and get the two dimensions on there first. Okay, so from the bottom up, the perch is 3 and 3 eighths, and then a diameter, 0.375. So 3 eighths diameter, 3 and 3 eighths up. Okay, so this is okay. So now it's this extrusion that I don't know. Um, I need something that tells me how far these come out. In here, seven point seven five. But that's not the way I modeled it. I modeled it from the center out, going each direction. So seven point seven five. I really want half of that out each way. Remember, on shape is a calculator as well. So I'm just going to type in seven point seven five divided by two and it'll do it for me. I'm going to repeat that. But remember, instead of using two different blind distances, you could have also changed the blind to symmetric. If you'd done that, instead of dividing the number in half, you could have just typed in 7.75, and it would have done the math for you, and it would have gone out the same distance, both forwards and backwards. The real benefit of doing it as a blind distance is you can have the option to be asymmetrical. With asymmetry you will have two different distances either forwards or backwards. So there is an advantage of being able to have the option for a second in position but a good majority of the time if you remember that it's there you have the symmetric option where you can allow it to do the math for you. Okay great let's go ahead and do the last two perches. So we need a diameter and we need locations. Um, so diameters are going to be the same. They're both 3 eighths of an inch. And then I need a location. Um, it looks like a half an inch up for the bottom one and seven inches for the other one. And then we need to repeat that original extrusion. So that was 7.75 divided by 2. I'm just going to copy it from here. 
and see if I can't paste it. And I can. Okay, great. That's what we needed. So we started out with an original cylinder, and I encourage you to make that similar to the actual size or the in size that you want. We went ahead and hollowed it out. Then the rest of these were kind of up to you. Um, you could have put the hole and the purchase on at the same time for this one side and then the other side. Uh, the rest of that's really kind of up to you. And so that's it. So that's how I got these features to intersect with the curved surface. Um, I didn't actually draw it off the curved surface at all. I did them off of a work plane that was in the middle. And again, later on we're going to cover how to actually put the planes where you want them to be rather than just use the original three that are given to you.